Hello, and welcome to Quarrelsome Rhinoceros Stitches, episode number 37. My name is Monica. I'm the host. This is a knitting, crocheting, and other crafty bits podcast based in Bangor, Maine, where I live with my husband. Today is April the 14th, 2020, and it's a nice sunny day, which is kind of a nice change from the, the kind of cruddy weather, weather we've been having lately. Yesterday it was rainy, um, and I did end up going out to my big night uh, location. I didn't see any amphibians last night, which is a little stressful, a little frustrating. <laughs> Um, anyway, I am, um, this podcast, I will have quite a lot to, of new projects to share with you. Um, I have been knitting quite a lot in the last few weeks, uh, since I last podcasted and I have an update on my beetle sweater, but I won't be sharing a couple of projects that I haven't made very much significant progress on. So I have the Hedgewitch shawl, which I've shown you before. I showed you in the last episode and in the episode, I introduced it in the episode that I had with Carrie. Um, so I won't be sharing that this podcast because I've only put about one repeats worth of length on it. And it's the same texture pattern that you've seen twice. So I will share it again when I do switch yarns for it um, to this lovely tealy blue. Um, but I won't be sharing that one today. So um, this is my second time recording this podcast today, or well, I recorded it yesterday and then I decided that I wanted to re-record because I got really rambly. Um, and I think part of it was just the sort of stress of talking about everything that's been going on lately. Um, obviously I know we're all stressed and it's, uh, it's a really interesting time, I guess. Um, a really stressful, really hard time for a lot of people right now. Um, and I really truly hope that you're all well and that you're safe and sound with your families. Um, and yeah, that's, um, I am still working. I do work for an essential business, so, uh, I am still working and I did sew myself a mask, but I'm not going to be sharing that on the podcast. Um, I struggled with the idea of the decision of whether I was going to share it on the podcast or not. And I did, I did make myself and my husband masks the other day and I um, have decided I'm not going to share them. So the reason that I knit, um, I guess this is pretty heavy to get into at the beginning of the podcast, but uh, I figured I would share it anyway. Um, the reason that I knit is to relieve stress. The reason that I sew is to relieve stress and to do something productive um, with the uh, anxiety that I feel. So. Um, these masks were crafted in in a very anxiety filled time and I really prefer not to share them just because they don't really bring me joy they just stress me out a little bit more anyway I did use a free pattern I literally just searched for cloth mask pattern if you do want to know the name of it I can find it I'll put it in the show notes just let me know but um, it was a really simple, easy to follow pattern. Um, I used hair tie. I know that I should have used flat elastic, but I didn't have any flat elastic and I didn't want to go out of the house to buy some. So I used hair ties that I cut in half for the um, loops around the ears. So um, I may switch those out if I do have to go out and to a store that happens to have flat elastic, but I'm not going to go out of my way, especially at this, um, trying sort of time um, to to find elastic that's going to work for um, that type style of mask. Anyway, um, I also do apologize if you can hear any commotion outside uh, <laughs> through the walls. Um, it seems to be fairly loud on my street. I think there might be some construction going on, but um, we're going to try and muscle through. <laughs> anyway, 
why don't we get right into the knitting? Um, and if you're returning, thanks so much for coming back and spending a little bit of your crafty time with me. And um, if you are new to the podcast, I'm sorry that I dumped that huge, you know, load of stress onto you right first off. But thank you so much for checking out the podcast. And um, if you do like, please give a little thumbs up. Uh, give me a, a subscribe. Get notified when I upload new videos by clicking the bell icon. All right, let's get into the actual knitting content. First with what I'm wearing. I believe I have shown this on the podcast before. This is my um, ripple crop top. It is a pattern by Jessie May, um, which you all should know her by now. She makes wonderfully size inclusive patterns um, that are all really easy to follow and they all look great on a bunch of different body types. And I am very, very excited. She is coming out with a new pattern. Um, it's very, very soon. It's If it's not today, it's in the next couple of days. Um, it is called the Ripple Butt Shorts, um, and I am actually really excited to wear or to knit myself a pair of shorts. I have never knit shorts um, or any kind of bottom uh, at all, so I'm pretty, pretty well looking forward to it. I'm not really sure which yarn in my stash I'm going to use, but we'll see. Um, it depends on, I haven't looked at her yardage requirements, um, or her, what weight it's done in yet either. So I'm not really sure what I've got in my stash that will work, but I'm determined not to buy any yarn for this project. I really want to start trying to use what's in my stash before I buy anything new, um, because I have quite a few things that have been in here for years and I'd really like to just get them out of stash, so. Anyway, I'll give you a little bit of a better look of the ripple crop top. I'm wearing it over my, uh, just, I have like a long maxi dress that I wear as pajamas sometimes. Um, so I am, it goes right down. This is about my natural waist right here. So it goes down just above my natural waist. I tend not to wear it by itself. Um, I tend to wear like a tank top or something underneath it. Um, but I absolutely adore this, um, absolutely adore this top that I knit myself last year maybe? I think it was last summer that I finished this sweater um, or shirt I guess um, and I really really enjoy wearing it and I love the color it's this wonderful sort of coppery rusty color um, rusty gold that I'm I'm in love with right now um, and obviously I matched my nails to it and my hair. Anyway, <laughs> um, I absolutely love this color right now and um, and it makes me very, very happy. So that is what I'm wearing. I'm trying to bring a little bit of joy to my already pretty stressful day. Um, I have quite a lot of homework since we transitioned to online learning. Um, for those that don't know, I am a student, a full-time student at the University of Maine in Orono and um, I am studying wildlife ecology. So I've got a lot of classes this semester that are labs, um, which is really difficult to transition online, um, but I have managed it so far. <laughs> and hopefully um, we will, uh, it'll be easy going for the last three weeks of the semester. It doesn't seem like it will be. I'm spending quite a lot of time doing homework as well as knitting. It's pretty nice to have something to work on while I'm just kind of watching a lecture or um, or reading textbooks for class or whatever. It's really nice to have just kind of a, a mindless project to work on when you're doing that. Um, or when I'm doing that specifically. Um, I know there's a lot of people who, who know what I mean. Um, having something to put your um, hands to work while your brain is busy trying not to stress um, is really, really important for me. So um, with that, I will let you know what I've, I've cast on three different projects and I've unburied a long languishing whip this week. Um, in order to have more things to work on when I don't feel like working on the beetle sweater. Now the beetle sweater is my main squeeze, my main squish right now, so um, 
I have put quite a lot of progress on that and I'm really excited to share that. But first I'm gonna share the other works in progress. So let's get into it. I'm gonna start with a long languishing whip that I had in my stash and I can't remember if I've shared it on the podcast yet or not. Um, and I also don't know what yarn it is. Um, so I have misplaced the label for it and I have absolutely no idea what yarn this is. So um, I'm going to guess it's probably a Malabrigo because I tend to pick up a lot of Malabrigo. And if I still have the tag, it's probably in this bin right here. Um, this bin has all of my swatches and all of my yarn tags from before I moved in what, October last year, September last year. <sighs> so I moved into an apartment in September last year and I used to have this cork board at my old apartment or my old uh, house and I put all of my all of my uh, yarn tags and all of the swatches that I've knit I put them up on that cork board and uh, that was it's like my memories my knitting memories board right now that is hanging up in my sort of crafting area with a picture of me and my great-grandparents when I was a kid and that's pretty much all that's on that board right now. I'm not really sure why I didn't unpack all of my all of my swatches, um, but they've been sitting kind of in this in this bin since I moved. So maybe eventually I'll get them up, but maybe not. I'm not really sure. Um, but if I do, there that's probably where where this yarn is because I'm pretty sure this has been a work in progress since then. So, um, this is the yarn that I'm using. I'm going to guess it's some sort of Malabrigo. I tend to be drawn to the, the Malabrigo sock when I go into uh, yarn stores. It's this lovely like purple brown gray with a bright pop of teal every so often. Um, it is wonderful. I am crocheting this into a spring fling shawl, I believe is the name of it. I will put a link in the um in the show notes if uh that is not correct i will also put the name of the pattern the actual name on the the pattern on the screen when i do editing so this is my little baby spring fling shawl it is a nice little granny square shawl or well granny triangle i guess shawl um i'm pretty sure that i started this after i saw someone else crochet one that I really, really enjoyed. So I um, started my own and I really, really like how it's turning out. So it is basically, I believe this is a free pattern. So it's basically, if you've done a granny square before, you can absolutely make this shawl. It is very, very simple to follow. And I am really enjoying this knit or this crochet. So um, I am using a 5.5 millimeter hook for this and I am sure that it is, I mean, and it is really, really large, obviously, for the really small gauge uh, sock weight yarn. So um, it's gonna be nice and like airy when it's finished. So hopefully um, I can make a little bit more progress on that here pretty soon. So that is my very first whip for this week. Oh, I also do have a finished object. I forgot the finished object. Let's do it now. Let's rebel, go out of order. <laughs> Last time I chatted with you a little bit about the Edgewater hat, which I um, knit for my grandmother. I cannot bring it to her right now because I uh, am not, I am distancing from my grandmother right now. My grandmother is in her seventies. Um, she is uh, also at high risk, not just because of age. Um, so I am making sure um, I'm checking in with her daily or well, almost every day. Um, and making sure she's, she's being safe when she does have to go out for groceries and things like that. Um, and that she is safe and healthy and, um, at home most of the time. <laughs> um, so until this quarantine sort of goes away, uh, which it will be quite a while. Um, until it is safe for me to visit her, I won't be visiting her, which means that she won't need this hat until next winter because it will hopefully, fingers crossed, be warm by the time I actually am able to give her this hat. 
but so the Edgewater hat is a free pattern. I found it on, uh, I actually searched on Ravelry for um, crochet hat patterns. Um, and this is the one that I liked the most. I did only really use it at the pattern as a recommendation rather than, rather than uh, use it to the letter. But um, I will explain that actually after I show you what it looks like on. So she wanted a hat that was specifically, would specifically go down past her ears so that um, she could have, you know, warm ears, obviously. So the last hat that I knit her, I think it goes like halfway down her ears. So I wanted to make sure this one would go all the way down. And I have a ponytail in, so it's, it's, or I have a bun right now. So it's um, pulling the hat back up a little bit, but I think on her head, she's got pretty short hair. So I think on her head, she will be able to pull this down a little bit more and actually really cover those ears. Um, so this is the first hat that I've crocheted that has uh, ribbing on the brim. Um, and I really, really like the effect. I really like how it looks. You sort of knit a really short, or knit, you crochet a really short strip around um, like this, back and forth, using, um, using like front and back loops when you crochet. Um, so it creates this really nice ribbed look um, and then you pick up, you sort of uh, single crochet around one edge of it, and then you make the hat up from there. And I actually really enjoyed uh, making this hat that way. The only thing I didn't like, which I mentioned in last episode, and it still is annoying me, um, <laughs> this is the part where I joined up the two part two um, sides from the cast on and. Um, from the sort of foundation chain that I made here. Um, so you can see the sort of difference and it's just because the yarn has two different tones to it. Um, I may end up either covering that with a flower <laughs> or just telling her that's the back of the hat. That's how you know where the front and back are because it's very frustrating. Um, so the Edgewater pattern has you do front loop and back loop knitting to make this nice little textured pattern. The only thing that I didn't really like about the Edgewater hat, uh, and you can sort of see where I tried to do it for the first two rows and then just gave up. Um, instead of having you crochet in the round, around and around and around, uh, they have you do it back and forth. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's just to get this sort of um, ridged pattern here. Um, which I wasn't really a fond, I wasn't really fond of. So instead of going back and forth, once I hit here, I decided that I was just going to continue in the round, uh, until the hat was long enough. And then I did my own decreases at the top. And I basically just took the stitch pattern and put it on what I would crochet for a hat, especially because this was also not crocheted in the right hook size. I believe this was an H, which is a uh, five millimeter. Um, I did, I think that the, the pattern calls for an eye hook, um, as far as I know, which I think is 5.5 .5 or 5.25 millimeter. Um, I couldn't find my eye hook at all. I had no idea where it was. So, so, um, I just decided I was going to do the H and, um, do a few more rows on the brim and then make it at least one more row tall and it should fit, um, pretty similarly to how it should. So that is the Edgewater hat and I will be gifting that, this to my grandmother once it is safe to do so. And especially since I am not, I am still in contact with the public, I don't want to risk infecting her even um, even if I don't, if I give her a contactless delivery of this hat, um, she also lives about an hour away from me. So I would have to drive for an hour to give her a potentially infected hat, um, <laughs> which is not, um, not ideal. <laughs> so I will just wait and give that to her once it is too warm to wear it. Anyway, <laughs> now that I have completely messed up the order, Let's get back to whips. These next three, now that's right, I said three, 
are ones that I have cast on in the last two weeks. <laughs> so, um, yes, I have cast on three new whips in the last two weeks because I wanted something to work on if I didn't feel like working on the beetle sweater. Um, some new exciting projects, but um, I really have been working mostly on the beetle sweater. So, <laughs> so the first one I will share is a sock for myself. This is one that I can knit when I am not, uh, when I don't want to, what's the word? When I need something to do with my hands, but I am busy doing other things. So watching, watching Netflix. Um, <laughs> no, when I'm doing homework um, and I'm just doing reading, um, or when I'm watching a lecture or whatever, I can use this to sort of focus my attention on the lecture um, so that I have something to do with my hands. So anyway, so this is a sock for myself. I am knitting it in Mad Fuzzy yarn. Um, Mad Fuzzy is a local dyer to me. She is, I believe, doing um, updates at this time. I can't remember if she already had one. I saw a post by her on Instagram though. Um, you can find, I believe it's Mad Fuzzy. I can't remember if it's just at Mad Fuzzy or if it's Mad Fuzzy Yarns. Anyway, so that is her little logo, which I think is adorable. Um, this is the Ancient Jewels sock set. I did point this out in my last episode that I may end up casting this on. So the sock set is a 70 and a 30 gram, a 70 gram ball and a 30 gram mini. Um, and it is on her pretty tough sock base, which is 80% uh, East Frisian wool and 20% Firestar nylon. So um, this, the, the interesting thing about this yarn is that the sheep are raised in Maine and um, the yarn is milled in Maine as well. And then she dyes it. Um, so it is a very, very local, local product to me. So I will show you the yarn. It is gorgeous sort of gold and blue and a little tiny speck of purple. I don't know if you can see the purple on the camera. It might be being washed out, but in this sort of area, you can kind of see a little bit of purple and I love it. And the, ooh, excuse me, the mini is this bright, bright blue. So I'm really looking forward to knitting myself a pair of socks out of this because it is ridiculously soft. Um, like I absolutely love this yarn. Um, but yeah, it is very squishy, very soft. I think it's going to make wonderful socks. Um, and I highly recommend checking out her Etsy store. I believe it's on Etsy. Anyway, um, so here is my progress on that. So this is what I'm calling my lazy tube. Now, if I had a, um, sock knitting machine, this is what I would be doing this, um, on. But uh, since I do not have that, I am knitting it by hand. So I have done a provisional cast on and I have knit sort of a tube and I'm just going to continue knitting this tube until this is gone. And then I'll cut them in half and I will put in heels, toes and cuffs. I'll pick up my provisional cast on and do some ribbing. Um, but for now, I am just going to knit a whole tube. Um, just keep going, keep going, keep going because I just want something mindless. So I will do the fiddly bits later when I feel like doing fiddly bits and I won't worry about them right now. So um, it is a little curly because I did use quite a large hook um, to do my provisional cast on. And also it's just a, it's just a tube of stockinette. So it's gonna roll up anyway. Um, but I love how it's turning out. I love how it's knitting up and I'm really excited to put more progress on this. Hopefully that will be pretty soon um, because I am nearing the end of the beetle sweater, so I will need more projects to work on. Um, I am also keeping this in a really interesting contraption that I bought probably from Knit Picks. Um, actually, I believe it was from Knit Picks a while ago um, that is just like this little cardboard tube that um, you put DPNs in, um, oops, I did that backwards, oh well, um, and your knitting kind of hangs out, hangs out the bottom, your sock kind of hangs out the bottom, and your DPNs don't have any where to go, so they can't, um, 
they can't lose your stitches or anything like that. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to putting this contrast in with this yarn because I think it's going to look really, really great. So anyway, there's that. Um, but yes, I definitely recommend checking out Mad Fuzzy's yarn. Um, doesn't have her Etsy information on here, but I'm pretty sure she's on Etsy. Um, but she is also on Instagram. I will put her Instagram handle on the screen. The next project, and I know I said I wasn't really into knitting socks lately, but I now have two socks on the needles. <laughs> oh, I'm also knitting that on a US1, which is a 2.25 millimeter needle. That is what um, I always knit my socks on. I also have um, 64 stitches on the needle. Um, the next pair of socks that I'm gonna share with you is, and I know I said I wasn't into knitting socks right now, and then I decided to knit some socks. And the reason being is that this entire little bin is completely full of sock yarn and uh, and like socks, like yarn that is really good for socks that would make really hard wearing really good, good socks um, and not really good anything else. So, <laughs> or I mean, they will, um, but I just this it, there's a bunch of commercially dyed sock yarn in there um, that is sort of rough and tumble kind of yarn that I want to make into socks, but I just haven't felt like knitting socks lately. So I'm hoping to work my way through that, that so that I can feel better about knitting all of this. <laughs> so um, the next socks that I'm working on are a Knit Picks Felici, which is in the color 8-bit, I believe. Yeah, there it is. Excuse my really, really torn label. So this is Knit Picks Felici, the Special Reserve 8-bit. Um, Felici is a really great sock yarn. It is a 75-25 merino nylon. Um, it is super wash um, and it is fingering weight. Um, you get 218 yards for 50 grams and it's a really nice soft sock yarn. Um, yeah, so this one is called 8-bit. I will show you the balls that I have. I have two 50 gram balls of yarn. So here are the yarns wound into skeins. So it's this like gray, this like light gray, this charcoal gray, and this bright neon sort of yellow, greeny, like yellow. Um, <laughs> And I have cast on two little itty bitty baby socks. These socks are not going to be for me. They have 70 some odd stitches on the needles. 74 maybe, nope, 70, 70 something stitches on the needles. Um, I am doing them two at a time so I don't have to remember how many stitches are on the needles because they are both already there. <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, these socks are for my husband. This will be the first pair of socks that I knit for my husband. I did measure around his foot so that I could know how many stitches to cast on. Um, and he has quite big feet, so it is going to take me quite a long time to knit these socks. But that is all right, because the whole point was to have something mindless to knit. The problem is that I forgot that ribbing is not mindless for me. Um, I can do knit two purl two rib um, without really looking or um, spending too much thought on it, but it is not an entirely thoughtless process for me. So um, I also cast it on right when I was doing the ribbing for the bottom of the beetle sweater. So I was not really inclined to get past the ribbing because I was already doing ribbing on other projects and um, ribbing is not my favorite. So, <laughs> so here is that sock. So I'm not starting them in the same place. Um, my husband doesn't seem to care. He just wants a pair of socks. He doesn't care if they match. He just wants me to knit him something is really the answer, which is why I also cast him on another project as well. So I cast on, um, I had been looking for, I someone else had knit a scarf that, um, who was it? I think it was uh, Candace of the Pin Feathers and Pearls podcast a long time ago though, um, was knitting the Kex scarf 
by Stephen West. Um, and I had forgotten what the name of the pattern was, and I thought it was a Stephen West pattern, but I couldn't remember. Um, and I had been looking for this pattern forever and ever and ever. Um, and then I finally remember who I saw who had knit it. And anyway, so I, um, I found a couple of yarns at the yarn store that I go to in Belfast. And uh, I knew I wanted to knit them into a scarf for my husband. Um, he wanted, so I'm holding them all in this, this um, owl's bag that I have by um, three bags full. Um, so the, so it's, uh, they're all Cascade 220, um, the yellow and the charcoal are the two that he wanted me to use, and then this red was the one that I decided I wanted to put with it, and then I actually realized that I only have enough yarn to do this scarf if I use both balls of this red that I bought, so, because I was going to use one to make myself a hat or some gloves or something. Um, but if I use both skeins of the red, which, so the red became the main color, which my husband would have preferred it to be either gray or yellow. Um, so anyway, so I cast on the Kex scarf and let me give you a little view of it if I can get untangled here. So here is the Kex scarf. It is a pattern by Stephen West. It is, um, it is this sort of, um, stockinette stripe with a few little um, slip stitches going up up it and then there, I think there's also horizontal uh, slip stitch sections as well but that is um, that is the scarf so far so this red color is my main color this is the back of the scarf which is just it just looks like it's stockinette stripes so um, the red is the main color so you'll see that quite a lot in the sh in the scarf obviously um, but I'm really really enjoying this knit and I find it really fascinating that just a few slip stitches on either side is keeping this from completely rolling into a tiny little circle or um, rolling up at all um, it's really neat. Um, I believe there is an edging on it, so it will help these corners kind of lay flat, but I find it really fascinating that only a few slip stitches in to break up a little bit of stockinette helps it just kind of stay straight rather than rolling. So yeah, I'm really enjoying this knit. This one is, um, because it's stripes, it's not boring, and because it's sort of, um, it's, you're doing something different all the time, I have a feeling that I will enjoy knitting this scarf. So, but yeah, so it's Cascade 220 and these three wonderful colors and I just love it. It's really good. Um, it is knit on a 5.5 millimeter, which is a US 9 um, needle. I'm using my Chow Goose as usual. I'm pretty sure almost everything I'm knitting right now other than my on my DPNs is on a Chow Goo needle because they are my favorite. Um, hands down, they are my favorite needles. So there's that. So that is my last new cast on work in progress. <sighs> that was a lot. Um, <laughs> so I decided I would just have a cast on party. I cast all of these on in the same like two hours before I had to go to work last week. And, um, I worked on them each just a little bit over the, over the week. Um, so that I could have something to share um, on the podcast, but also just so that I could have something to do while I was doing some schoolwork. So the last project I'm gonna talk about is the beetle sweater. So, which I know all of you have been waiting. And it's the only thing I ever talk about even when I'm not talking about it. <laughs> I've been a little bit obsessed. Um, I am not going to lie. I sped through the body of the sweater. I'm almost, I finished one sleeve and I'm almost all done with the second sleeve. So <laughs> this sweater has taken up quite a lot of my headspace in the last few weeks and it has brought me quite a lot of joy while I'm knitting it and it ma just makes me happy to look at it every time and I still can't believe that I actually knit this sweater. So, so here's the beetle sweater again. You can see the beetle color work like I showed you last time, but this time I have finished the whole body of the sweater. Try and get a better 
angle on this here. So I believe when I showed it to you before, I was in the plain stockinette part um, after I um, joined for in the round for the body. Um, and so I have knit the entire color work at the bottom of the sweater and I have added the ribbing on the bottom as well. So I am also, I cast on or picked up the stitches for the sleeves and I knit the entire, uh, the entire left sleeve, which includes the color work, which surprising was so much easier than the one at the body and it was not as dreadful as I felt about the color work on the body. Um, <laughs> because at that point I was tired of color work but then I got to this and it was it was nothing because it's only like 60 stitches that you're doing the color work over um and now I am on the second sleeve second sleeves definitely feel like second socks to me so having to knit a second sleeve is annoying <laughs> um I just want to be done with the sleeve so I can do the steek. That is my, I am so ready to do the steek. So, um, yeah, that is where I'm at with the beetle sweater. The pattern for the beetle itself, I wrote or I made up in Excel using a sort of uh, reference photo of someone had drawn a rhino beetle and I decided, or a, I can't remember if it's a Hercules beetle or a rhino beetle. I think it's a rhino beetle. Um, and I decided I would make that into a stitch pattern and then I found a sweater to put it on. Um, and the sweater that I put it on is the Denisa cardigan. Um, and the Denisa cardigan, the only part of color work that is actually on the sweater is this part here and at the bottom of the sleeve. So the rest of it is plain in the original pattern. But because I'm a glutton for punishment, I decided to put a beetle on the back not realizing that this whole part was done flat and then joined in the round later. Um, so I ended up doing all of this color work, but pearl side as well. So um, I don't recommend doing pearl side color work. It is unnecessarily complicated, um, but I love how this turned out. Um, I did add these little chevrons at the top once I picked the pattern that I wanted to put it on because I kind of wanted it to match the bottom of the sweater. So, but the opposite, I guess, if that makes sense. So these ones are pointed down, those guys are pointed up. So anyway, so that is my beetle sweater. That is where I am. I am on the right sleeve, almost done. I'm so close. This project is knit on the US 4 needles, which is a 3.5 millimeter. That is what I got gauge with. I do have my gauge swatches here. I don't know if I shared them last time, but so this is the needle or this is the size that the pattern calls for. Um, my swatch ended up about an inch too big on each side. So, or like an inch square all around. And you can kind of see through, sort of see through the fabric. And so I wasn't really enamored of that weave of fabric that I got. You can definitely see through that. And so if it had stretched at all, you would be able to see through it. And that wasn't really what I was looking for for my sweater. I didn't like the fabric that produced. So I swatched it in one needle size smaller and you can kind of see a little bit see through it, but it is a little bit tighter of a weave. Um, I am knitting the 110 centimeter size. I probably should have cast on the 130 centimeter size since that is actually the size of my bust. Um, or the closest to my bust measurement, but um, at this point, this sweater actually fits me really well. Um, so I think I'm just gonna keep it this way and I'm never knitting that color work pattern ever again. So <laughs> um, I this is absolutely a product knit for me. There is no, like part of this process is really cool. I really enjoy it, but um, it has been a product knit since the beginning and I cannot wait to be able to wear it. And even if it is too warm when I finish, I am still going to wear this sweater. I don't even care. <laughs> so, um, so that is the beetle sweater, um, the Denise cardigan. It is a really, really fun uh, knit and it would have been way, way easier if I had just took it easy on myself and didn't put a giant beetle across the back. 
Um, that being said, this is probably one of my favorite projects I have ever knit and I'm going to probably come up, dream up some sort of other color work project when I am finished with that one because it was quite fun to do, but hopefully I won't dream up one that has uh, color work on the pearl side ever, ever again. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that is my last work in progress. That is the last nitty thing that I have to share with you. I don't have any acquisitions. I am on a very, very, very tight budget now that I only have one job, um, which means that I can't really put any new things into my stash for a while. Oh, I forgot to tell you what yarn it was made out of. <sighs> Goodness gracious. So, so the um, beetle sweater is made out of the Fiberco Erin Moore Light um, in three different colors. I will put those in the show notes. And um, it is a wonderful 80% um, wool, 10% silk, 10% cashmere blend. It is the softest yarn I have felt in a really long time. And I am very, 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 very excited to wear that sweater. So anyway, so that is the last bit of knitting content that I have to share with you. So if you were just here for the knitting um, and not for all of my excessive rambling afterward, um, thanks so much for watching and um, I will catch you next time when I record. And if you are sticking around, then I'm going to tell you a little bit about my work in the last couple of days or the last couple of weeks. And I will mention a couple of things that I've been working on in my other, in my the, the rest of my life, I guess. Um, so, um, one of the frustrating things is that I work for an essential business, but my position isn't really essential. Um, so I work for a hardware store and I mix paint. So I had a customer come in last weekend that told me to stay safe and I got really angry. Um, and I'm still really angry because I really want people to stay home. If they stayed home, I would stay safe. This gentleman was only coming in to buy paint. He w he came to the paint counter, bought his paint, and then went straight to the checkout. So he was just there for paint. Um, and it was very frustrating. We still have people shopping the aisles, just looking for bargains while they're, you know, because they're bored. And I get that, but they need to go out into nature. <laughs> <laughs> go out somewhere that is, there isn't a, lo a load of people already out. Um, but yeah, anyway, that is that is what my work has been the last few weeks. Um, like I said, my company is providing us with masks. Um, they are also giving a raise to hourly employees for the month of April and also they're, they gave us a bonus as well. So they do, they are trying to help. Um, but they know that we are considered essential, so it is really hard for them. Obviously, they have to sort of incentivize people to come to work, um, which I think is what that is. Rather than rather than helping, it's kind of it's not making it any better. But I'm not going to complain because I get paid two extra dollars an hour. So, um, so yeah, um, that is pretty exciting. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> looking forward to those paychecks. Um, but I also um, have released the first podcast episode of In Nature, which was the um, sort of nature walk podcast that I talked about. I think I talked about it a little bit last time. Um, but I am going to produce one episode a month. And this month I've tried, so I did record last night for this month's episode, but I didn't really get very much good footage to share, so hopefully I'll be able to get out and do it again. Um, I am volunteering for a project called the Big Night, which is amphibian migration to vernal pools. So um, amphibians, what they hibernate over the winter and then they, um, when it gets warm and wet, they get up and they go to a vernal pool to mate and uh, and then, you know, go about their lives. But, um, so they lay eggs in the vernal pool and then they hatch. Anyway, so I didn't get to see any amphibians last night, which was really, really frustrating. Um, but I did start the recording for the episode of In Nature. So, um, if you want to check that out, I will put a link down in the 
description as well as the show notes as well down there. Um, and yeah, I think that was everything I had to talk about. School has been rough. Um, I've been spending about three times more uh, of my time going over lecture material, um, and that's just not even including the homework that I've been assigned. So, and it all kind of just feels like busy work, which is really unfortunate. Um, and I still have no idea whether my summer internship is still on or it's all kind of up in the air right now. So yeah. Anyway, I hope you guys are safe. I truly, truly hope that you're safe and healthy and, um, when you, and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day whenever you end up watching this. Um, even if it's not during this quarantine time, <laughs> I hope you're having a wonderful day. Thank you so much for tuning in, checking out what I'm doing for knitting, and um, spending a little bit of your time with me. It really does mean the world to me um, when I have, uh, when people enjoy the podcast. So thanks so much. Have a wonderful afternoon, and I will see you when I record next. Thanks so much. Bye!